next on Hinch. Sex before sport, does it help or hinder our top athletes? No, I really can't sort of say it helps or it doesn't help because I've never tried it before a game. I've always believed probably superstitiously that the day of the game it's bad luck. I miss out a lot of the time. Top performers on and off the field, next on Hitch. Channel 7 congratulates Alan Jeans and his Mighty Hawks. 1989 BFL Premiers. Seven Nightly News with Peter Mitchell and Simone Simmons. A dramatic Geelong fight back fails to stop back-to-back -back premierships for Hawthorne. And the army rushed in after protesters invade the Narunga spy base. Good evening. Hawthorne's victory dominates tonight's news. But also the record cocaine haul, Zsa Zsa guilty, and the East German exodus continues. Hawthorne today made history by becoming the first team in the brown and gold to win back-to-back -back flags when they beat Geelong by one goal in a classic grand final at the MCG. The Hawks had to withstand a withering eight-goal final term from the Cats and a rampaging Gary Ablett to achieve the feat. Peter Landy is at the MCG and Pete, are you still shaking? I think the nails are bitten down to the quick, Pete. It was certainly one of the best grand finals of all time with the Cats just failing to snatch victory in a last man standing affair. Brilliant Cat Gary Ablett booted nine goals to win the Norm Smith medal, but Hawthorne, with platinum ears off the ground injured for much of the game, managed to hold on to record a sensational victory. Dunstall and Anderson each kicked uh, four goals for the winners. After losing the two early games by a point and two points, things finally went right for Geelong when Burke called right on Alan Border's coin toss. And within 15 seconds, Gary Ablett took the first mark, which produced the first goal. At the same time, Yates was collecting Brereton as the Cats flexed their muscles, and the Hawks star was moved to the forward pocket. The Hawks kicked the next five goals, firstly through Dunstall. Then Brereton, hurt but courageous. The other superstar, Ablett, was dealt with by Ayres. Dean Anderson contributed to Hawthorne's eight-goal first quarter. But this mark by Brownless showed the Cats weren't done, despite a 40-point deficit. Aggression was still the key, and Platten was groggy as he left early in the second quarter. The Cats fought back, Ablett living up to all expectations. He had four goals to half-time, and Geelong reduced the margin to four goals. But Hawthorne steadied, and with relentless running, Pritchard set up Dunstall second, and the Hawks led at the long break by 37 points. Sneaks it through for a goal. Again, Geelong started well with their spectacular brand of football. Great mark for Yates. And again, they fought back, but couldn't get closer than four goals. When the pressure was on, the Hawks were able to find something extra. And goals. And they lost dual Norm Smith medalist Gary Ayres with a thigh injury. 19-year-old Greg Madigan got his chance and started a rush which gave Hawthorne a six-goal break at the last change. To Anderson. Anderson, 35 metres out and closing. Captain Tuck was added to the injured list, Hawthorne below the full complement. This time, the Geelong comeback was sustained. Ablett on his way to nine goals and the Norm Smith medal. Hawthorne found reserves of energy and the thriller was up for grabs. Not even Batwoman could divert attention. And when Gary Cameron marked and goaled deep into time on, the Cats were within a kick. But time ran out for them and Hawthorne had won their all-time aim of back-to-back -back flags. The spoils to the winners, but football a big winner as we depart the 80s. Yes, I'm sure you'll agree a truly fantastic match as we go down to Michael Roberts in the jubilant Hawthorne dressing rooms. Well, I've got, uh, I've got Peter Curran down here and I've got Sam Crimmins. It's a fantastic uh, feeling down here. Peter, you've created club history by winning back-to-back -back flags. How does it feel? It feels fantastic, Michael. I mean, you know, we, uh, we had a very formidable opponent that didn't let up on us today and we were lucky, I suppose, in the en analysis to be able to uh, come out on top. But uh, that's back-to-back -back premierships now. It's in the history books and we've, you know, we're very, very proud of it. And I've, I mean, I, I nearly hugged Greeny's head off before after the game. You know, we, uh, it was something we set out to do and we finally achieved it. And I just feel very happy. It was a tremendous grand final, a classic. What was it like out there? It was very hard. It was very fast. I thought, uh, you know, Ablett 
played magnificently, but by the same token, I thought Langer's last quarter was pretty good, considering the number of opportunities that he got was uh, you know, fantastic. And of course, Lindner played very well, but we were, I guess we just fought it out to the end and we got there. Well, it's tre tremendous, as I said, down here uh, in the Hawthorne room. So well done, Peter. And back to you, Peter Landy. Ninth last year, so near, yet so far for Malcolm Blight in 1989. As we go to the catch dressing room now, Malcolm Blight with Bernie Quinlan. Thanks, Malcolm, for talking to us. Although the boys lost, you would have been tremendously proud of the way they played. Yeah, I, I suppose in a six-point game of footy, anything could have happened. And, um, yeah, we got off to a bad start and had some chances throughout the game, I suppose, to get back into it. It was very physical in that first quarter. Was uh, that your instructions, you being a very fair player? Brownlow winner, did you instruct the players to really go out and have a uh, go at the Hawthorne players physically?